Here is Joe Concha filling in for Steve Malzberg. 5 o'clock, 5.06 here in the East on a Friday afternoon. Thank you for saying, you know what, screw happy hour. All right, I'm waiting until 6 o'clock because this show has been so riveting to this point. And I'm not being sarcastic. We've, we've had a great show so far. Dave Briggs, NBC Sports, Brian Kilmeade of Fox & Friends, Judith Miller. I could go down the list. I mean, we, we've been killing it today and, and, and certainly having a great time. So thanks for being here, guys and girls. Much appreciated. Uh, we, we got a couple of uh, great guests coming up here in the 5 o'clock hour. Uh, we have former vice presidential candidate. You may have heard of her, Sarah Palin. She'll be joining us uh, at the bottom of the hour. Uh, also with us now, David Horowitz. He's the founder and president of the David Horowitz Freedom Center. He's also the, the author of uh, a, a tremendous title, by the way, The Black Book of the American Left. How Horowitz, I think, has written something like 174 books, and I don't know how he turns them out because I can barely do a 700-word column without being exhausted. So, David, uh, kudos to you on, on the book, and, you know, you just keep... You just keep writing and writing. I, I don't know how you do it, but uh, it, it's it's compelling stuff, and I thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you. Yeah, this is the first of ten volumes on the American left. Wow, ten volumes. Seriously, as a writer, if I could just talk to you on, on that sense for uh, for a second, where, where do you get the motivation? I get it primarily from coffee and middle-of-the-night kind of ideas that come, well, but what's your motivation? It's kind of like Ahab, you know, <laughs> pursuing the white whale. <laughs> well done, and, and, and a perfect analogy. Hey, uh, speaking of sinking ships, I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Obamacare. And, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's pretty easy to, to, to agree here, and I think even Democrats would jump on this, that this is the worst rollout of a government program in modern history. And I don't well, think I'm using hyperbole there. Program. And look, the problem with Democrats is that they uh, somebody forgot to tell them that socialism doesn't work. Uh, there, there, there was no way that Obamacare could work. You can't increase the number of people covered, increase the coverage, and lower the costs. It just doesn't happen that way. And then you can't plan health care for 300 million people. Uh, there's no computer that can do that. And, and, and this really is an indictment on government running big programs, right? I mean, it, it it's, clearly... It's, yeah, they're socialists, and, they, and they, they haven't learned from the collapse of communism that socialism is an unworkable system. It does not work. And you know about that firsthand, David, and, and, and just reading about you a lot, and it's fascinating that your parents were actually communists and you were once a, a member of the left. What, what turned you? I, I know that uh, you, you had an assistant that, that, was, uh, that was murdered uh, back in the 70s and served fund a school for them to buy a church which they could put 150 kids and I recruited my I was editing the largest magazine of the left ramparts and I recruited my bookkeeper and they murdered her and that murder took place about the same time that the left succeeded in driving America out of Vietnam and uh, the communists then proceeded to slaughter two and a half million people there were no demonstrations by leftists for these Vietnamese because the left was always about um, its anti-Americanism. It was never about the Vietnamese. Uh, and and the de Democrats, of course, are still proud of what they did uh, to help. The fact of the matter is that Valerie Jarrett and David Axelrod, the two key advisors to Obama and Obama, all were born into the communist left the way I was, all grew up in the communist left, all were trained in the communist left, and graduated to the communist new left and have never left it. And I know that, and that, that's, that's what this book, um, The Black Book of the American Left, is about. I know that because I did leave the left, and I will tell you, if you leave a destructive, evil movement, the first thing you want to do is to tell people, is to repudiate it and warn people about the dangers that it uh, Pretends. That's interesting. And now here we are, you know, 40 years after the Vietnam War. I, I want to play a clip, David, uh, from George Stephanopoulos. And, and basically he's talking about President Obama and the entire progressive vision being in jeopardy as a result of what we've seen here from Obamacare from the last, from the last six months. Go ahead and roll the uh, clip, guys. Number nine. Even when Americans disagreed with him, they trusted him and liked him. If that personal credibility crumbles, everything else falls. That number had always held from BP to Benghazi. Mm -hmm. That number had held, but it had started to go down. So this isn't just about Obamacare in their view. Not at all. This is the president's signature achievement. That it would be a black mark for him not to work. But bigger than that, this has the potential to undermine his entire legacy, his entire vision of government. I went back and read 
the president's inaugural speech from just the beginning of this year, this was a ringing call to what he called collective action, government action. If government doesn't work here, he is not going to be able to advance that agenda for activist, ambitious government. His entire vision for a second term begins to collapse. George Stephanopoulos, of course, was a senior member of the Clinton administration, David, and he seems uh, yeah. to be dead on with that assessment. Uh, yeah, I've been saying all week that if there's a God who intervenes in history, the Democrats and the, the Democrats, socialists, uh, have destroyed themselves for a generation. Can this be fixed, David? In other words, the president talked about fixes yesterday. How can it be people... fixed? Look, you can't uh, increase the coverage and increase the, the coverage of the policies uh, and increase the number of people so, co covered and lower the cost. So how do you they put the toothpaste back in the every, tube? Everything they said about Obamacare turns out to be a lie. It's true. So we're trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together, right? I mean, is what what is the only way out here? It's just to repeal it and, and start over from scratch. Uh, can that be done yeah, politically? Yeah, let's go back to the old system, which people liked. You know, I mean, the, the problem with health care is, first of all, trial lawyers. Um, part of the reason the costs are so high uh, is, is because doctors have to get this, uh, you know, malpractice insurance because they're subject to suits all over the place. So you need tort reform. That's that's one. Another reason it's so high is you have all these illegals, uh, you know, clogging up and loading up our hospital and uh, and emergency care systems and not paying uh, to support them. I mean, anybody who's been to an emergency room knows that. You know, there's people in there who are going for coughs and colds, even though it, you can't go to an emergency room that it doesn't cost a thousand or two thousand dollars. So who pays? The rest of us pay. Uh, you just, as, as Maggie Thatcher says, you know, socialism runs into a wall when they find out that you know they run out of other people's money. Well, and, and that's true. And you make a great point about tort reform. And I, I guess when you have lawyers in, in positions of power in Washington, the, these things never get done. But th that's the thing. And I, I got people close to me that, that work in emergency rooms. And I can tell you that, you know, all you hear about is all these extra tests that may have to be ordered because they're so yeah. afraid they're going to be sued. And if somebody sues a doctor and they happen to lose, they have no case, no skin off their back. You know, lawyers just going to represent them, you know, pro bono well, we anyway. Need that tort reform, if you lose the, you know, the case, you have to pay, you know, to all these frivolous lawsuits. Yeah, There's that's so a law in Britain. And if there are uninsured people, you just create a pool the way you do for, you know, drivers that are too risky. So you, you, you have a pool, and, you, you know, there are so many ways to fix this, but it was never about care. It's about a building block of socialism. It's about taking over a sixth of the economy and then controlling everybody's life. Well, Look, you, if, you're, if you're willing to use the IRS politically, if you have the health care information of everybody, if you control the access to care, that is the life chances of everybody, and if you have a spy agency that can read every communication, you don't need a secret police to create a one-party state. You already have it. You can destroy any opponent. You have the information to do it. Uh, and that that's the problem with these Democrats. They don't see any problem in that, that they, you know, that that's what they want. They want to control your life because they know what's best for you. The book is called The Black Book of the American Left. David Horowitz, thanks very much for joining us. We appreciate you. Have an awesome weekend. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you're happy about what you're seeing right now in Washington, D.C. Oh, uh, yeah, this is a joyous time for conservatives. <laughs> Thank you, David. And we'll be back, everybody, in just a couple of minutes. Sarah Palin coming up at the bottom of the hour. Larry Clayman as well. As I said, we got an awesome show here for you, and we're certainly enjoying ourselves so far. So this is the Steve Malzberg Show. New